thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to present this, this paper. And uh, this is a great audience to, uh, to get, to get uh, uh, comments and discussion and, uh, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, this is a joint project with Yanis Bako, it's also at NYU. And uh, you know, for a while now, Yanis and I have been investigating blockchain and blockchain related technologies. Uh, one of those uh, technologies uh, is uh, smart contracts. And like with any blockchain technologies, we have heard a lot about how smart contracts are going to make the business landscape more decentralized and democratic and is going to free us from the domination of a large, uh, large players. Uh, the smart contracts are themselves, I'm not going for this audience here, I'm not going to go into a lot of explanation of smart contracts, just, uh, just a little bit, but let me uh, point out that uh, you know, uh, smart contracts themselves go back to, uh, to, to the 1996 uh, paper by Nick Zabo, uh, where he describes the now iconic example of car lease. And in that example, if a payment on a car is missed, uh, the smart contract will automatically lock the car and return the control rights to the, to the bank. After uh, 2014, Ethereum made uh, smart contracts much more popular and smart contracts entered uh, mainstream discourse. And uh, since that, uh, it has been said uh, and expected that smart contracts will make contracting complete. They will uh, allow us to get rid of courts. They will allow us to get rid of escrow holders and other trusted enforcers. Uh, with that, they will enable for complete decentralization. So there were a lot of DAOs. There are DAOs. DAOs uh, are enabled by smart contracts. And I'm not talking about the failed big D DAO case, but there are many other DAOs. And in the result, that should allow for democratization of, uh, of the, the business landscape of industries. That should allow us uh, to have small entrants coming and competing in, on the leveled field with, uh, with large uh, incumbents and large players. So those are big promises. Uh, what we set out to do is to build a model to uh, figure out whether smart contracts really can deliver on those promises. And if so, what are the economic forces that are allow us that would allow them to do that? Uh, so to, to start with, just to, uh, to, to ground the, the terms, a uh, smart contract uh, is basically a computer program. And it's a specific computer program that automatically executes an agreement between the parties uh, upon a certain trigger. So uh, uh, to be fully uh, clear, uh, a smart contract does not need multiple parties. You can have a smart contract with yourself uh, on Ethereum. But the, the ones that we think are going to be interesting are the ones that involve multiple parties. So um, the key characteristic of a smart contract, the one that is going to bring the most benefit, is that because of the automated execution, it does not allow on uh, does not allow reneging on the on the terms of uh, of the agreement. The key limitation is that the trigger and the agreement must allow for, allow for digital input and digital execution. And this is a limitation because not every agreement allows, uh, uh, allows for such level of digital codifiability. Uh, and that means that such agreement uh, is not, does not lend itself to smart contracting. So not everything can be smart contracted out. Um, the uh, digital inputs that are necessary for smart contracts very often uh, come from uh, new connected sensors. So sometimes we already have the digital input that we need, but very often when we are talking about smart contracts, uh, we mean that we are going to also set out new sensors. The sensors are connected in order to, to directly provide input to the, to the smart contract. And uh, this, such connected sensors are now, uh, now also known as Internet of Things. And uh, because of that, because of this uh, of, of, uh, a connection between the dependency between the smart contracts and, uh, and the sensors, the benefits of smart contracts are often confused with those of digital sensors. 
And this, in fact, goes back even to the Nixabos uh, Carly's example, because in that example, the main benefit comes from the mechanism that allows the car to be locked remotely. Uh, and uh, this benefit is ascribed to the smart contract. Um, but the two technologies can be implemented separately. We can have sensors without smart contracts, and we have uh, we have we can have smart contracts with the existing uh, digital inputs without uh, without adding new technology. So we built a simple model uh, in order to carefully separate the effect of the smart contracts and sensors on the contracting situation. And uh, what we find is that sensors expand the state space over which the, uh, the parties can contract. The smart contracts restrict the strategy space. And because of that, they are going to have a different effect on the efficiency of the contract. So uh, let me uh, describe the, the very simple uh, model an example that we are we are working with, and it is motivated by the fact that a lot of smart contracts nowadays are uh, actually implemented in shipping industries. So we have a fruit company and a transportation company, FNT, and uh, fruit company contracts with the transportation company for uh, shipping of uh, perishable good uh, fruit at the price of P. The uh, the shipment may be of high quality or low quality. If the shipping is of high quality, which means that fruit is properly refrigerated, um, F obtains high value, because the fruit is tasty and lasts longer, and uh, T uh, incurs a higher cost because refrigeration is costly. If the shipment is low quality, uh, fruit was not refrigerated, the uh, fruit company obtains low quality because the fruit is going to rot in quickly on the shelf, and uh, transportation company uh, bears only lower cost. It doesn't need to bear the cost of refrigeration. We are going to assume that shipment, even of low quality, is uh, more of, uh, socially beneficial. Uh, and it would be even better to have high quality shipment, even though it is of high cost. And if the fruit is not shipped at all, both parties obtain zero. After the delivery, the fruit company should pay to the transportation company. But if it doesn't, transportation company can take a fruit company to court to uh, extract the payment. If the dispute is brought to court, then both parties are going to bear some non-reimbursable uh, cost of legal action. Uh, that could be effort and stress and, uh, and some, other, um, some other aspect that cannot be, uh, uh, cannot be uh, 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 reimbursed in a way. And uh, in the simple model, we are assuming that the courts are always fair and they are able to uh, enforce the performance of the contracts in full. Uh, the, the model lends itself easily to, uh, to, to relaxing this assumption to some extent and even actually do comparative statics on the fairness of courts. So um, in, in this setup, uh, we, what is crucial is uh, on the, uh, upon delivery, when the, uh, the fruit is delivered, the refrigeration is not observable. So we cannot see at the moment or verifiable in court. So the fruit, can, fruit company cannot see whether the fruit was refrigerated. Yes, they are going to get higher or lower uh, value out of it later down the road, but not at the moment of um, the delivery and payment. Uh, the fact of delivery and the payment itself is both observable and verifiable. So, uh, so that that uh, that can be easily contracted upon. So that is the uh, extended uh, former presentation of this game, uh, where the transportation company can provide low quality delivery, high quality delivery, no delivery at all. Uh, the fruit company pays or does not pay, and then if it doesn't pay, the transportation company takes legal action or not. So uh, it's very easily seen that in such a case, in this environment, the, the trading is never efficient in equilibrium. First uh, of all, if the cost of legal action is too high, is high, uh, then the transportation company will not find it worthwhile to take 
uh, the fruit company to court if the payment is not made, knowing that the fruit company is not going to pay, knowing that the transportation company is not going to, to deliver at all. There is no, no trading and uh, zero social welfare. But even for low uh, value of uh, legal action, even if uh, uh, the, the threat of uh, going to court is a credible threat, uh, then we are only going to get low quality delivery in this equilibrium because the contract cannot be specified for the for different quality of, of uh, delivery. Okay? So markets, <clears throat> current situation, have a way to deal with that. We, are, we, we can have relational contracts, we can have reputation, we can have uh, long-term relationships. Um, but in all those, all those cases, uh, the, the mechanisms that are defending us against this, uh, this failure uh, are favoring large companies and they require trust. So the premise of smart contracts is that maybe with smart contracts, we can have a, a relationship that does not require trust and uh, will allow small companies to come enter the market and, and play the level playing field with the large incumbents. So that should work out even in the one period game. So we see that smart contracts can help a little bit, but uh, we're going to qualify that. So uh, because the fruit delivery and the payment uh, are, are verifiable, we can assume that they're, digiti uh, they're digitally codifiable, we can have a smart contract that is going to make an automatic payment upon the delivery. With that, it restricts the strategy space of, of F because now F no longer has a choice between pay and not pay. That is going to improve the contracting situation because now even for high cost of uh, legal action, uh, the uh, transportation company will deliver the fruit because we'll know that it will get paid. Uh, so a smart contract is going to make contracting possible where it was not possible before, but it does not increase the efficiency of the trade because the only quality of the delivery that is going to happen is low quality. Uh, so uh, we can think and, and, and look into the effect of sensors. So uh, if the sensors are put into place, and just sensors without a smart contract, uh, the uh, sensors that would, for example, in the container of the, uh, of the shipment, uh, that would allow to distinguish between refrigerated and non-refrigerated shipment upon delivery. Um, sensors uh, provide, the, um, uh, provide the variable on which the contract can be, uh, can be specified, and also it would be an evidence verifiable in court. That, uh, quite naturally is going to allow us to, uh, to, to distinguish between states and is going to allow for efficient, uh, high quality delivery when delivery happens. At the same time, however, if the cost of going to court is high, uh, the same dynamics applies. Transportation company is not going to find it worthwhile to go to, 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 go to court and take legal action, that knowing that a fruit company is not going to pay, knowing that transportation company is not going to deliver. So smart contracts are going to, uh, to, to help in some, some situations and uh, sensors are going to, to help distinguish between the states. But for those high, high cost of, um, uh, of legal action, uh, the uh, the only way to get the efficient trade uh, is to have both smart contracts and, uh, and sensors. So, uh, so when we have both technologies together, contracting in equilibrium is fully efficient. So um, as are clear synergies, but as we can see also the synergies may depend on the parameters. So uh, smart contracts and sensors have different, uh, uh, affect differently the interactions. Sensors increase the state space over which the parties can contract and smart contracts reduce the strategy space. So in effect, smart contracts can make uh, contracting possible when it was not, but in themselves, they are not improving efficiency. Whereas sensors can increase efficiency when contracting already occurs. And those benefits will have different value depending on the parameters. And if we also 
take into account that both of those technologies can be implemented together and they will have different costs of being implemented, we can ask when is it optimal uh, to implement one technology or the other technology or when do we need to implement both of them together. Okay. What we find is that sometimes when we implement one of the technology, adding the other technology brings no benefit. And if we, and in other times for other parameters, uh, implementing only one technology brings absolutely no benefit. It only makes it worthwhile if we can efficiently, if we can, if, if we can afford to, uh, to implement both technologies together. So if the uh, cost of legal action is really low, uh, then there is no argument and no, no benefit from, uh, from uh, implementing smart contracts, even when smart contracts are really cheap to implement. When the, and there may be some regions where it is optimal to implement uh, sensors. When we have, inter, uh, when we have uh, intermediate uh, value of uh, legal action, uh, we can see that the smart contracts may be worthwhile to implement. The area where it's worthwhile to implement smart contracts is increasing, but it is never good to implement, never uh, beneficial to implement both of them together. So in, in some regions, when one of them can do the job, I think the other one is not going to improve. Whereas if this uh, cost of legal action is really high, then uh, it may be worthwhile to implement smart, smart contracts. It may be worthwhile to implement sensors only when it is also worthwhile to implement smart contracts. Sensors by themselves are not going to, to help, uh, help at all. And in fact, in, some, in this region, implementing smart contracts at all uh, alone is also not, not good. Uh, so this, uh, the, depending on the parameters, also, it tells us for which industries which technologies may be optimal to, to, be, uh, to be implemented and in which industries they, uh, the, the, each of the technologies or both of them together can, uh, can effectively change the relationships between the, uh, in, in the market. Now, another thing is that even though implementing a technology may be socially optimal, the individual incentives to adoption may differ. So what we find, we find that uh, if we look at the individual incentives, under some parameters, we get over provision of technology and sometimes we get under provision of technology. So for example, as we uh, said earlier, for really low costs of legal action, uh, it is not socially optimal to implement smart contracts because they provide no benefit and they are costly to implement. And yet if the transportation company has low bargaining power, then the fruit company has incentive to impose this technology, even though it lowers social welfare because it allows a fruit company to capture more surplus from tea. And um, uh, the a transportation company, if it has low bargaining power, it may also be worse off with sensors uh, because of uh, with or without smart contracts. Uh, even though a social surplus uh, increases. And this is also because a uh, fruit company can uh, extract more surplus uh, with sensors. And this may give incentives to sabotage sensors if they are imposed, um, uh, uh, imposed anyway. So let me finish here uh, uh, and wrap it up. Uh, what we show is that carefully se se separating the effects of smart contracts and uh, sensors on contracting situation uh, it shows that uh, sensors increase the strategy space over which we can contract. Smart contracts reduce, uh, reduce the, uh, the strategy space and it has different effects on the, different effects on the efficiency of contracting. Uh, we find conditions under which it is uh, optimal to implement one uh, of, the, of the technologies on where there are synergies to implement both or it doesn't make sense to implement only one. And we also look at the incentives to adopt that may be conflicting with the social uh, optimal. And uh, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to Q&A.